guys, it's uh, Caleb with White Metal Games. It's uh, Sunday, and I just wanted to do a quick update on everything that's been going on in the studio, so I'll just jump right into it. Um, first off, the Necron stuff is still doing quite well, so I'll continue to work on those. Um, here's just a few of the bikes that I've been working on. These are, are Tomb Blades, or what I'm counting as Tomb Blades. Uh, now, the bike in the Codex is a little more lean forward. This is kind of a simple conversion that I do here in the workshop. Uh, basically, I took the Command Barge kit and I just tried to use as many bits as I possibly could from it on as many different models. So I use it for both the Triarch Stalker, this guy, um, and the, uh, the Doom Scythes. This still needs the cannon mounted on the side and the cabling on the back, but otherwise it's done. I'm just waiting on those kits to come in. Um, as you can see, although I wasn't much of a Necron guy before, these are all the different kits I've amassed. And I finally started working on wraiths and uh, spiders over the last couple days. So if you haven't jumped on eBay there, look for uh, Canop Tech Wraith or Spider and you'll see my work there. I just put out the first ones of those. Um, okay. Because I'm waiting on parts to come in, I have some time to catch up on some old projects and conversions. This is for a client who wanted a Turvagon, but he wanted an Alien Queen Turvagon. So what I've done here is I've, he wanted it tournament okay, so I had to sort of use as many official Tyranid bits as I could. So what I did was I took a basic Carnifex kit, I extended the neck with several neck pieces, and then gray stuffed all that together. This is a, a, a Trigon head that's mounted underneath this Kenner Alien Queen headpiece, which is very hard to duplicate, so I don't even bother. Uh, and then it's got massive arms here from the Alien Kenner Queen kit. I thought about using the biggest ones, but I felt like they really took away from the scything talons, so they kind of overshadowed it. This way they kind of work better together. Both the legs are mounted here underneath and gray stuffed together. And then I mounted two more small arms here in the center chest, like the Queen has on the movie. Um, this tail piece here is actually an extension from a human spinal column that I thought worked pretty well. And then I use a Tyranid Carnifex tail to finish it out and taper it down there at the end. Now it looks kind of rough right now, but once you grace, once you paint that, it's going to be one nice, smooth, continuous piece and it's going to look pretty good. It's not quite as thin as I might have liked, uh, but I was using bits I had here. Uh, I ordered some additional bits, but shipping is super slow right now. Uh, instead of having um, her sort of have an egg sack, I had her protecting these eggs on the ground, which I imagine is a little more alien queenish. Um, so I think that works pretty well for that. I built two more harpies. Um, I, I sold three harpies a few weeks ago, and they went, went so well, I decided to build some more. So I built one, and it wasn't moving very well, so I thought if I had a little variety, uh, I might be able to showcase them a little bit better. Uh, these guys go for about $65 or $75, depending on what my mood is that day when I list them. Um, they're a combination of Carnifex kit. This one actually has some Trigon bits as well. Um, and then it's got these wings from a, um, a spawn, not a spawn, excuse me, a dragon heart dragon. Uh, this tail is from a Kenner alien, and that's topped off with a Carnifex bit there. Um, some of the old second edition monstrous creature talons, which I like quite a bit. And all that goes on a 60 millimeter pegged base. Um, sets pretty well, as you can see. Uh, this one was very popular. People like these wings on this guy for some reason, so that's the last set of wings I have, unfortunately. Uh, this one is a little more traditional. These wings are actually from, um, not from a dragon from GW, but from a, um, uh, what do you call that thing? Um, the thing the Nazgul ride. I can't think of what it's called. The big wyvern looking dragon creature. Fell beast, excuse me. Anyway, so these wings are from a fell beast. You can tell because they've got these little uh, perforations on the tops, and then they've got these holes in them like they're sort of ragged, which I like quite a bit, and they blend in very, very well to the carapace there. Again, the same basic technique. It's just a Carnifex torso, some spore, spore bombs the arms which I have to break one of the joints on the side to get it to go onto the other side and then these uh, these side mandibles come from a Trigon kit as well so he's just a kit bash of several different kits put together he all goes on a 60 millimeter base he'll probably go for slightly less than this one just because he's a little less um, immaculate but those wings are a nice touch and he is certainly tournament legal um, this one really is too uh, it's just the wings of the tail that are not GW pieces so both of those are great for tournaments and harpies are a fun model should be used more often uh, a couple orc models. I had some extra bits from a battle wagon I recently cut up, so I made this little grot tank with some spare Aegis defense line bits, some orc stamps on there to sort of cover things up. This little uh, treads are from a robo gear tank, and then the top piece here is from a orc uh, battle wagon, 
which I had left over from a, a kit. I'll show you what I did with the main part of the kit. So that's going up on eBay. This I'm counting as a Def Dread, which will also go up on eBay in the next couple days with two close combat weapons and two big uh, shooters. Um, it, this uh, sort of opening here was partially designed to clo hide over the original opening, and that goblin-like head in there is, is supposed to be a grot head. Um, so this was originally a model called Frankenstein from Armorcast, which I thought was a really fun model. I got it in a lot of other stuff, and I wanted to use the model eventually, so I used these two massive claws. One of these claws is from the uh, battle wagon that I mentioned earlier, and then these cannons are from the battle wagon as well. Uh, and then this other claw is from actually an alien toy. Um, and then I sort of opened it up with this sort of flower petal design, like a cannon been ripped open down the middle, sort of put this guy in there. Um, which I kind of like, and it also does the, the double job of hiding some of the uh, crude um, work inside there. Um, and he's mounted to it. This is actually a 65 millimeter base. Uh, but once you put some whatever detritus down there or some gray stuff or green stuff or sand or flock, you'll be able to hide that really easy. And I think he works really well as a Def Dread. Um, so he's ready to rock. He'll be up on eBay as well. I have a client who's commissioned uh, two Squigoths. This is the first. She wanted a regular Squigoth. Uh, the Forge World model is rather expensive, so she's always looking for... This client is looking for alternatives for cheaper models. So this is what we came up with. Um, this is the most immaculate one of these I've done so far. The, it started out, the floor is actually from a Cities of Death kit, and then I just mounted uh, these sort of side bits from some Pegasus kits, and I just kept building with scrap on top of scrap. Uh, these are some old Valkyrie, uh, uh, not Valkyrie, uh, Imperial Guard Valkyrie uh, pieces for the cockpits that I've sort of cut up, bashed up old hatches and stuff to cover this up. This is some parts from the tank as well, including this large cannon, which was from the tank. Um, and then we've mounted all that on there. We've bolted these chains onto his carapace with screws, so they're not going anywhere. Um, and then I may, in fact, go back and add some plating here to the legs as well as a finishing touch. I've ordered a death roller to finish that out. So he goes on, a, I think this is an eight inch base, and he's ready to go. He's a nice model. There's plenty of room up here. As you can see, I can put my entire hand in here it's about a five inch opening so that's huge it's plenty of room for models plenty of places to see out of um, i think that's turned out real well this is the bigger one this is the gargantuan squig off now this guy goes for about 350 dollars on forge world's website again the client wanted a cheaper conversion for that this is a uh, this was originally a tyranna a triceratops model and these two horns were originally his upper horns and what we've did is taken those and mounted them to his lower jaw and then sort of turn those into large fangs. This tongue is made out of gray stuff. These teeth were made out of dozens of these dominatrix kits I've been using from aliens for a while. These were originally the teeth for the dominatrixes that I had so many left over. I could create row upon row of serrated teeth. Um, and he had a beak, which we've covered up with gray stuff here to sort of continue this pattern of scale. Um, his body is also made in a similar way. We used a massive Cities of Death floor plan for this. Uh, and then just started building out from there. We built on this massive iron howda. His leg m leg coverings are actually made from um, Aegis defense lines. I had several of those from another project. So I used those for leg coverings, which I thought stacked up really well. He's actually got one on his neck as well. It's hard to see. These chains are bolted on um, to his lower body. They're bolted way underneath here. You can't even see it. Um, and then they're tied up here. Um, there's some thick glue scarring up here, but I think that's okay with the works because it looks like weld lines. And then we just took this battle wagon and just cut it all to pieces to make sides and doors and portholes and firing areas. Um, these are the original gunners from the kit, and then I've just extended their gun to a much larger dual-barreled sort of big shooter thing. Um, the big lava on the back is custom. This is a custom-made bit as well. Um, it's actually a little too big, I think. It could have been a little smaller, but I like the, the basic look of the gun. And then this huge, massive cannon up front with a small, I guess, sort of staging area for boys to hang out. Um, so there's another look at it, and I'll sort of give it a slow turn. Um, so this guy is mounted, as you can see, on a 20-inch base. He's huge. Uh, and if you look at his scale-by-scale -scale comparison, you can see that he's two and a half times bigger than the first one. Uh, the other side is similar. It's not quite as hodgepodge. We can sort of push this one out a little bit more. Um, you can see that up here on top, there's a huge platform, plenty of room for probably 20 boys up there. Um, so that one's ready to go uh, when the client is ready to finish covering the charges for it. So uh, if you're just tuning into this, my name is Caleb, and I do custom conversion with
Contact with the camera. Contact with the camera.